And shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome, Master Rio. Shalom. Let us blow the shofar. Let us blow the trumpet for this young Traditionally, is done at the end of Yom Kippur, Astes Rio, which is called in the English uh, the Day of Atonement. And um, for those who may be watching this on Ethiopian World Net, or even one of the Sisterhood or Brotherhood channels, Fellowship channel. And um, if you can, uh, repost these videos. Um, you all know that we haven't uh, posted any new vids on Ethiopian World Net. And this might be, if, if we're going we're gonna to pray Abba in Yeshua's name, whether we should post this as like the, you know, after this suspension. What was very interesting, actually, right? Um, what's very interesting is that if we click on this uh, back frame right here, some of you might recall this particular frame right there. Mm -hmm. And one will say, oh, we're planning this. Or we, you know, we're trying to say, oh, look, look, there's a sign or something. But there is a sign there, you know, um, that if you remember Ethiopian world, remember the Ethiopian world? Some are, are new subscribers, some are new members, um, subscribers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. Some are new trolls, trollers as well. You know, so some might not really recall that um, in, uh, what was it, October 9th, 2008. You see that right over there, October 9th. 2008, um, that we were banned and censored because of some uh, freedom of speech video that we posted, and um, some took offense to the truth, and they flagged the vids, and in fact, one sister had said to I and I, when we see some of these vids that are blaspheming his majesty, insulting, we as Ethiopian Hebrews and the Rastafari, should we flag them? Like when we see them, like, of course we should. You know what I'm saying? Of course we should. You know, no doubt about it. Um, we probably have to form a committee for that. You know, this, but first things first, this is Yom Kippur. And when we were looking through some of the, um, some of the slides and stills, um, that we would use, as well as studying up using this time of uh, it was a two-week suspension for a video that was named um, the black man's the black man's problem, um, a God problem. You might go and see that uh, it's a slick Willie. If you look look at slick Willie revisited, you'll see the part two of the vid is still up there. But if you do a little more search and put, um, I think. Um, black man's problem, Israel, Slick Willie, uh, Slick Willie revisited, you know, Willie Lynch, you probably will be able to um, link um, on, a, on a fellowship channel. The particular vid um, is there. And that's basically just to let ones and ones know. Some might have known, some probably don't know, and some have been very concerned, and we give thanks and haven't been able to um, link and contact everyone who have showed their concern for I 
and for I and I House and for Lion of Judah and for the society and the overall works because they haven't seen any new posts. So um, we say uh, forgive I and I, you know, I and I apologies, of course, you know, on not being able to communicate, We, you know, not having certain systems in place. But, you know, this crisis is an opportunity, basically. But the interesting thing, let's get into this right here for a moment. The interesting thing is, right, the point of interest is this right here. Okay, this was like after our return before back in 2008, right here. If you see the return of the Lion of Judah, Yom Kippur greetings, and once again, this is Yom Kippur. So what a what a more um, ideal time to um, post if we still have, if we're off of this uh, two week or so suspension, or you know, um, for you know, getting a strike to our account. And you know, they do these sort of things, so you know, to set it up and you know, to cause a lot of you know, negativity, you know, so you can be open, you know, you can be open to the negative, fall off from your faith, basically. But this is not a time to fall back, but to move forward. Forward ever and backward never. So we kept moving forward, but it was interesting looking at this, that, you know, and we're speaking here again um, on our vids being banned and censored, censored, not Ethiopian world, you understand, but Ethiopian world net. Yovas, and this was October 9th, 2008. So, this evening we're recording this Wednesday at the end of Yom Kippur for 2012. Yom Kippur, September uh, 26th, right? September 26th, um, 2012. So, we thought we'd just make a, you know, make a brief note about that and concerning that, and as well as to give our Yom Kippur um, greetings, or Astes Rio Pamarinya, in them heart, we know this as Astes Rio. So here we have the the Yota, the Yota software. Let's bring this, let's bring this in right here. Uh, we have the Yota software. That's on. Okay this over right here so you can see this a little more um, center, right? And um, we have Orita the Lewawian, um, the Torah or the Orit of uh, Leviticus 9 and 7. We also have 16 and, and 17. Um, and if you look through uh, chapter 23, um, it speaks of, in fact, let's uh, see if we can go here to chapter 23. So we begin off with the blowing of the shofar. Now there's so, I mean, the, the, each of the Moedim, the Ba'alatat, or the Ba'alat, the Ba'alatat, or the Ge'ez, and from the Ge'ez, um, in the Hebrews, Moedim, the Moedim. I mean, the Moedims are the, the, the holy days, because we're told in the Gospels, that Christ, that the Moshiach, that Yeshua, he fulfilled all the Old Testament um, types and similes. And it was interesting in watching some of the news on the Day of Atonement, um, watching some of the news, you know, for the, the OJs or the other Jews. So somebody who said they found it offensive that we said the other Jews. Well, um, but it's very obvious that that is just the, the fact of the matter. You know, the truth may be an offense, but it's not a sin. And although, you know, being banned or people flagging it for um, hatred re reasons, you know, might seem to frustrate the work, you know, but we just ground ourselves in Yeshua and the crisis, the crisis actually becomes an opportunity. And we hope that ones and ones have found the opportunity to even maybe catch up with some of the older, um, previous posted vids, um, as well as, um, you know, to also their own studies and their personal 
you know, the personal discipline, discipleship and the personal discipline. Now, I'm going to go through right here where, okay, here's where, here's where it's first um, um, a mention, or rather, actually, here's where it's first um, um, mentioned in the sense of what we call Yom Kippur or Yom Kippurim, right here in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter um, chapter 23 at verse 20, at verse 27. And if you have your Schofield Study Bible, right, the Schofield Study Bible as well, um, please uh, reference chapter, let's go to chapter 23 for a moment. Now, the Schofield Study Bible gives a good groundation for the significance. Remember, as we teach, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Now, Yeshua... Uh, Adonai, Adonai Yeshua, Gita Yesus, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he fulfilled all of the Old Testament types. And, and these Old Testament types, these, when we say types, think about it in the sense people say, oh, Christianity, or they say it's a mythology. In a sense, yes, it is. This is a parable. These parables have been fulfilled. And we're now in the fullness of the fulfillment of the mystery of, of God, of the true God, our God and Father, the, the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the fulfillment of the mystery of God in Christ, God through Christ and in Christ, and the, and the, the word of Christ being fulfilled in the revelation of Ras Teferi and, and, and the Rastafari movement. So we are like the early church. As the early church was, so are we. So if we study the early church and if we learn from, from study and diligent study and, and Bible study and, and, and prayer and fellowship, a lot of the difficulty that many ones and ones you know, within the ministry, there's other situations that we like to, you know, um, um, address and speak to both publicly as well as um, privately to those involved. But the Day of Atonement is significant. So verses 26 to verse 32 covers the Day of Atonement in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23. Now, the day is described in Leviticus XVI or Leviticus uh, chapter 16. But here in chapter 23, the stress is laid upon the, 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 the sorrow and the repentance of Israel. Now, with the veil taken off of our eyes, that is black Israel. And with the veil taken off of your eyes, you see right here, this is our um, black Israel or Hebrew the true Hebrew Israelite foundation. And you see um, Wentworth Arthur Matthews, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews, the commandment keepers right here. And you see them blowing the you see them blowing the shofar. Right? You see them blowing the shofar. And here's the artwork with um, a Rastafari also blowing that shofar and you can see those in the white raiment as Revelation says, who are who are who are these? You know who who are who are these? You know the the, the, the voices, acts, in, in in heaven. Who who are all of these? You know they're looking at I and I and say, well, who are all of these? You know, well, these are they who came through great tribulation and they have washed their their robes, their garments, in the blood of the Lamb. Now, the blood of the Lamb. That's interesting because that also connects with the overstanding. So in order to get the Overstanding Christologically, we need to go to the foundation. This is what we're going to just briefly, you know, briefly address right here, right? So who are these? These are the overcomers. And may I and I, in faith, courage, and, 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 and the just cause, the just cause of the King of Kings and his Christ be of that number. As, as it said in, on this particular day, um, um, being inscribed. Uh, uh, um, where is that verse where it says about us being inscribed in the book? I mean, there's so much 
connected with this particular in fact I have a set of notes here in front of me and it's about 45 pages and it's I think it's like point, point ten, point eleven. so we most likely will not be able to get through all of this at this particular time and just had got a print out of this so I didn't get a chance to highlight everything in here but it's it's still based on what we're studying and as we go through our Torah portion, as we learn of the gospel, the good news, as we learn of the true Christ according to the spirit and the word and the truth, it, it all begins to to come together. You understand? It all begins to um it all begins to, to make sense. In fact, um Isaiah there's a haftarah that focuses some fast, some of the Jews and Hebrews, some of them fast on this day because it is said that let this day be a day of afflicting, uh, a day of afflicting your soul. And um, directly it does not state to fast within the commandment, but this is what many have done uh, uh, traditionally on this particular, on this particular, um, on this particular day. Um, this is also a time of I and I being inscribed in the book of life so when we're studying in the gospels and we're reading about um, being written in the book when ones will sing songs and in church and 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 and, and, and even um, with the ayabingi or and that, you know singing spiritual songs about uh, one of the names to be written in the book you know this 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 holy day also connects with that particular um, that particular idea. So um, I'm looking over this right here. We'll we'll go through it in, in other follow-ups as well. Let's just continue with what, what we're reading in the Schofield um, the Schofield uh, Study Bible footnote to the Schofield Study Bible. And if we have that still open here, no, we don't have it open down here. But even this chart here, I'm not too sure if we've updated. Um, our page yet with this chart. This is from some of I and I notes right here, and it gives an overview of, as you can see right here, may Yahweh and His Mashi, Yeshua, bless and keep you all in and through His new name. And here's Orit Zelewawi on Ras Haya Sos Kuter Arat, chapter 23 and 4 of of um, Leviticus, it says in the Z, ye egziavi her Yahweh malet the alat be ye zemanacho ye mitau juacho ye tek edese ye tek edese gubai nacho. It says these, these, these seven, right? The main seven. These are the feast of the Lord. These are the feast of the Lord, of Yahweh, of he who be who he be, of his divine majesty, of the Father of Abba. Even holy convocations or holy gatherings. So ideally these are um times that we are to come together and to gather almost like the Shabbat or like the Sabbath, where ones would gather, you know, every seventh day within their homes and family for the Seder, right? Um, which ye shall proclaim. So these are to be proclaimed. So I also apologize and ask your forgiveness, although part of it was beyond I and I control, because the haters and trollers will troll, and the haters will hate. And if we... Um, do not support the root, you know what I mean? If we don't support the root, then what happens to the branches and what happens to the fruit? You know, so we need to support the root. And as we come together, you know what I'm saying? As we are rooted in the word, as we are rooted in our faith, as we grow, as we deny our ego and our he goat and our she goat, our egos. Now, it's interesting also this particular um this particular Moedim, this particular Baal, um, where there is a, a sacrifice, there's two goats, the whole matter about the two goats. We've touched on it throughout the year and previously, but we'll hopefully do a little more 
diligence to kind of just hone in. You know, saying use different teaching methods. You know, saying and different ways of seeking to get the point across. So some of this might sound familiar. You know, saying or similar. You know, saying to some, but it, it's very good to um to to test your knowledge. You know, saying to really test your knowledge. That's what Bible study. You know, saying fellowship, the havruta, the havrim, the sisterhood. All of that comes in because we cannot really do it so. Not that we cannot, but it's very difficult to do it singularly. You can do, and you must do, if there's no one else and there's no one who is worthy, who regards his word and the spirit and the son in spirit and in truth and in reality, then one must separate from that, and still one is not alone. But but the fellowship is very, very, is very, very important. So what do we have here? We have that we are to proclaim these in their seasons, Vedya Zemanacho, in their seasons. Now we say Adis Zemin for the new year, and the same word Zemin, a season or age. Now we have Fasika, right? Fasika, coming from the top, Fasika, which is the time of observance, is uh, Nisan or Aviv or Abib, the Aviv, the barley harvest, uh, the 14th. The historical data is that this is the blood, signifies the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost that protects the Israelites, the Beit Israel, and Israel's deliverance out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, as Jeremiah, I think it's Jeremiah, what is 2023, 20, um, speaks of no longer will they say in the Passover Seder, Blessed be the Lord that, that Yah, Yah, Yah live, Yahai, Yahai, who delivered the children of Israel out of the north country, but they shall say, let's just get this right here because it's important for us to touch on this. And although this is not the direct, the direct uh, um, holy day, it's important for us to understand what the prophets have said and how we need to upgrade. Because remember, Christ spoke through the prophets, according to the, the Wengel, the good news. He spoke through the Prophet. So here in 23, Jeremiah 23, look at that, Leviticus 23, Jeremiah 23, we have uh, verse 7 and 8 where it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, saith Jah, that they shall no more say, Jah live, which brought up the children of Israel out of the, out of the land of Egypt, but they will say, Jah live, Yahai, Yahai, Jah live, Yahu Egeziah Harin which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel, of the house, the bait, the bait Israel, out of the north country, the north country. Oh, you wonder what north country this could be? Take a guess, right? The north country, and from all countries, with the eye had driven them. So who's taking responsibility for us being driven into all these lands. That's why we keep saying that it's not really, our problem is not really a white man problem. Now, now, now the European, the Gentiles have done above and beyond what they should have done. You know what I'm saying? We were put in their hands. We recognize that. You know what I'm saying? But it says the iniquity, right? The iniquity is them doing what they thought was right in their own eyesight against us. You know what I'm um, but our slavery or enslavement and our dispersion, John says he has done that, right? But he says that he will, he will once again bring us up, right, bring us up out of the north country and out of all the countries whither he had driven us, right? And we shall dwell in our own land, in our own land. Right, and I, and, I, and I only, now verse 9 is interesting because it says that um, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets, all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, I'm like a man whom wine hath overcome because of Yahweh and because of the words of his Kedisinah, because of the words of his, his, his holiness for all the prophets. Now, some interpret it in various ways because the prophets get... Um, there are many prophets that don't want to really say what Yah said. They want to tell you nice, sweet nothings. You always know, say they want to tell you sweet nothings. And the reason why we just segue there, 
as we bring this, let's see if we can bring this up again. The reason why we segue there is that if you look over in this column, and we should bring this up, yeah, if you look over in this column, right, bring this up front and center, because this is, this is this is over here on this column is what we have, okay, the Fasica, which is Passover, right? The feast. See the feast of the Allah. Now the biblical references, that column this is our notes here, so we didn't fill that out, but we can give you these references even right now and study. But as we get this out, we'll get those references. But overstand this, to overstand how Christ fulfilled all the Old Testament types. Right, Yeshua, right, our black Lord and Savior, Adonai, how he fulfilled these. Now, the historical data is in the Old Testament, in, in, in Exodus, it was the blood on the, of the Lamb on the doorpost that protected the Israelites, remember? And the Israelites were delivered out of Egypt's house of bondage, remember? Mm. There's some Afrocentrics that have some argument, but you know, um, you know, oh, Egypt, the house of bondage, how do you say that? Oh, because they get a little confused. They need to go to the root. The root is Ethiopia, all right? They need to get to their roots, their real roots, right? But we'll, we'll address that as the Holy Spirit wills. Here, the messianic data now. Now we have the historical data, the historical fact. Now we have the messianic fact or the messianic data, right? It's the prophetic fulfillment is the death of the Lamb, which is the Messiah or the Mashiach. Christos, Jesus, Yeshua, Yehoshua, on the wood, right, on the wood of the tree, or what may be called the cross tree. So that's the fulfillment right there. Now, this is the first fascica, so we're now at, we're moving towards the, the seventh. So let's just scroll forward right here. Now, you can see we just had uh, the Rosh Hashanah. I think we wasn't able to post at that time, or the Meleket Dint uh, Metasebiya, the Feast of Trumpets. But what does the Feast of Trumpets, since that was just, um, what was that, about 10, 11, about 11 days ago? The Feast of Trumpets, Adis Ahmed, or Yom Ruach, that's the, that is uh, Tishri, or Tishrei, Tish, uh, Tishrei And, or, or One, Ahad, um, or September 11th. See that? That's September 11th, Ethiopian New Year. However, it's the 12th during leap years when we talk about the solar and the lunar, the, the, the Christ is the sun, the light, and the, the lunar, the Old Testament, the mother, the mother, the father, the restoration, the family of God in Christ. The blowing of the shofar, the Ethiopian Hebrew New Year. And that's what we had at the beginning of this clip right here, the blowing of uh, a sample of the blowing of the shofar. So what's the messianic data on it? The messianic data is the resurrection of the dead. Now these are things that we have to meditate, but first of all we have to have the data so that we can meditate on it. Because as you meditate on it, you will begin to recognize, you know, the, 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 the divine hand of God. You know what I mean? You, you begin to recognize that this was not like the liars and the haters of Yeshua. And the haters of the righteous try to say, you know what I mean? They try to act like, oh, the Bible is just another book. That's only if you're a blockhead. If you're a blockhead, then, yeah, it, it, it seems like another book. You know what I'm saying? But if you, if you turn away from your way, if you repent and you begin to study, you know what I'm saying? If you begin to study and, and, and show yourself approved, then you begin to recognize that it's not like any just ordinary book. You understand, and, 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 and our God is not like any of these false gods. You understand, and that our Christ, the black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is not like any of these false or counterfeit Christ or, or whatever they would call themselves, right? But the resurrection of the dead is signified by this um, blowing of the shofar, the, uh, the Rosh Hashanah, the Adi Samet, the Ethiopian New Year, right? The resurrection of the dead, Yom Teruah, as well as the rapture, or the the Natal, the Natal, the Natal is figured in that, the rapture or the meeting Christ in the ear. Now, there's many different interpretations of that, and we're not going to touch on that. We've touched on that in some of the previous vids. You know, what does this... um. 
um, rapture really mean? Does it mean that we're going to go bodily flying up in the clouds? Or is it a more spiritual, metaphysical thing? Is it, is it something of a consciousness rapture? All right, that's, that's one of the um, key points and, and questions that ones should ask and resolve for themselves. But we have the rapture of the Mitmanon. Who are the Mitmanon? The Mitmanon are the faithful. Uh, King James calls them right here, King James called them the Beli Evers, but that's that's kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? We have to grow up to him. So at the kindergarten level of Christina or Christianity of our studies, of course we we see it and we receive it on that kindergarten level. But as we grow to you know, as we grow up, we begin to recognize what does Amen mean, what does um Mitmanan, um, um Amin, we get into the root